In the years following World War II, large numbers of German civilians and captured soldiers were forced into labor by the Allied forces. The topic of using Germans as forced labor for reparations was first broached at the Tehran Conference in 1943, where Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin demanded four million German workers. Forced labor was also included in the final protocol of the Yalta Conference in January 1945, where it was sanctioned by UK Prime Minister Winston Churchill and US President Frank. Franklin D. Roosevelt. Topic: Eastern Europe. Topic: Soviet Union. The largest group of forced laborers in the Soviet Union consisted of several million German prisoners of war. Most German POW survivors of the forced labor camps in the Soviet Union were released in 1953. Estimates of German POW casualties in both East and West and cumulative for both the war and peacetime period range from 600,000 to 1 million. According to the section of the German Red Cross dealing with tracing the captives, the ultimate fate of 1,300,000 German POWs in Allied custody is still unknown, they are still officially listed as missing. The capture and transfer of civilian ethnic Germans to the Soviet Union began as soon as countries with a German minority began to be overrun in 1944. Large numbers of civilians were taken from countries such as Romania, Yugoslavia, and from the eastern parts of Germany itself. For example, after Christmas 1944 between 27,000 and 30,000 ethnic Germans aged 18 to 40 were sent to the USSR from Yugoslavia. Women made up 90% of the group. Most were sent to labor camps in the Donbass or Donas Basin, where 16% of them died. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Poland. Many ethnic Germans living within the Polish pre-war borders, prior to their expulsion, were used for years as forced labor in labor camps such as that run by Solomon Morel. Among these camps were Central Labor Camp Jaworzno, Central Labor Camp Pochulis, Lambinowis, Zagoda Labor Camp and others. The law authorizing forced labor, Article 20 of the Law on the Exclusion of the Enemy Elements from Society, also removed rights to Polish citizenship and all property owned. The many camps were used during the process of the expulsions for the sake of rehabilitating Reichs or Volksdeutsch, to decide if they could stay or go, but in reality, this was a program of slave labor. Roughly 200,000 ethnic Germans died in the Soviet run concentration camps in Poland, others were still amongst the rest of the population, but the Polish government had made several declarations that the German population should be exploited as forced labor, instructing a minimum of 60 hours work per week with no rights for breaks. The salaries were insufficient for survival, usually 25 or 50 percent of Polish salaries. Topic: <inaudible> Czechoslovakia. The German-speaking population of the Sudetenland was, in the same case as Poland, expelled after the war. The expulsion was not indiscriminate, however, since as late as 1947, large numbers of skilled German workmen were still being detained. Germans were forced to wear a white armband with the letter N for 
Nemic, signifying German in Czech to identify them, even German Jews had to wear it. Czech Deputy Premier Petr Mares has in the past, in vain, tried to arrange compensation for ethnic Germans who were forcibly resettled or used as forced labor after the war. Topic: Eastern Germany. Many Germans in what would become East Germany were forced by the communist authorities to work in German uranium mines, producing the majority of the raw material of the Soviet atomic bomb project. Beginning in the summer of 1946 the Soviets began explorations in the Erzgebirge, and sealing off the old radium hot springs by September of the same year. An initial workforce of 4 to 5,000 was established, with another 20,000 called for by the end of the year. The work was dangerous and stressful and the Soviets made no effort to improve it, as a result the mines became filled with forced labor conscripts and has been compared to a death march and the gulags of Kalima. Quotas were repeatedly set and raised, and conscription took place without regard to health or work experience. Mines became staffed with office workers, craftsmen, and students with no mining experience. By 1948, workers were pulled away from factories and criminals from jails to staff the mines, as were POWs returning to Germany from the Soviet Union. Housing lagged behind the burgeoning workers with many regions doubling in population between 1946 and 1951, worsening already difficult conditions. The mines were considered worse than a penal colony, but were controlled directly by Moscow and local governments were unable to help. When an extra 60,000 workers were called for in the summer of 1947, a wave of potential workers flooded into West Germany to avoid the mines including many citizens who would otherwise prefer to live in the communist East. Workers who began as volunteers were turned into forced laborers. In an effort to increase the number of laborers, women were increasingly recruited to the non-segregated mines, many of whom brought or were infected with venereal diseases, and were sexually exploited by the Russian guards. Workers who attempted to escape, whether conscripts or volunteers, were hunted down and returned to the mines. Eventually Germans would become more involved in the running of the mines, forming a joint company with Russia in 1956. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Western Europe. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Background. Contrary to Section IV of the Hague Convention of 1907, the laws and customs of war on land, the SHAEF Counter Insurgency Manual included provisions for forced labor and hostage taking. Topic: <laughs> France and Low Countries. German prisoners were forced to clear minefields in France and the Low Countries. According to Simon Mackenzie, "...callous self-interest and a desire for retribution played a role in the fate." of German prisoners, and he exemplifies by pointing out that sick or otherwise unfit prisoners were forcibly used for labor, and in France and the Low Countries this also included work such as highly dangerous mine clearing. By September 1945 it was estimated by the French authorities that 2,000 prisoners were being maimed and killed each month in accidents. 
Some of the 740,000 German prisoners transferred in 1945 by the U.S. for forced labor in France came from the Rheinweisenlager camps. These forced laborers were already very weak, many weighing barely 50 kilograms (110 pounds). In retaliation for acts of resistance, French occupation forces expelled more than 25,000 civilians from their homes. Some of these civilians were subsequently forced to clear minefields in Alsace. Topic: <inaudible> United Kingdom. In 1946, the UK had more than 400,000 prisoners. Many had been transferred from POW camps in the US and Canada. Many of these were used as forced labor, as a form of reparations. The two main reasons for their internment were political re education, Wilton Park, and for non officers' employment as agricultural and other labor. In 1946, a fifth of all agricultural work in the UK was performed by German prisoners. An emotional and public debate ensued in the UK, where words such as slaves, slave labour, and forced labour were increasingly used in the media and in the House of Commons of the United Kingdom. In 1947 the Ministry of Agriculture argued against rapid repatriation of working German prisoners, since by then they made up 25% of the land workforce, and they wanted to use them also in 1948. Faced with political difficulties in using volunteer foreign labor a compromise solution was suggested by the Ministry of Agriculture, German prisoners were to be allowed to remain in Britain as free men. Following disputes about how many former prisoners of war would be permitted to remain voluntarily in Britain and whether they would first have to return briefly to Germany before being allowed to officially migrate to Britain, by the end of 1947 about 250,000 of the prisoners of war were repatriated, and the last repatriations took place in November 1948. About 24,000 chose to remain voluntarily in Britain. Topic: <inaudible> Norway. In Norway, the last available casualty record from August 29, 1945, shows that by that time a total of 275 German soldiers had been killed while clearing mines, while an additional 392 had been maimed. German protests that forcing POWs to clear mines was against international law, Article 32 of the Geneva Conventions, were rejected with the assertion that the Germans were not POWs, they were disarmed forces who had surrendered unconditionally. Avandi Stierker Sam had overget seg Bettingelses lost. Mine clearance reports received by the Allied Forces Headquarters state, June 21, 1945, 199 dead and 163 wounded Germans, three Norwegians and four British wounded. The last registration, from August 29, 1945 lists 392 wounded and 275 dead Germans. Mine clearance was then for unknown reasons halted for close to a year before recommencing under better conditions during June to September 1946. This time many volunteered thanks to good pay, and death rates were much lower, possibly thanks in part to a deal permitting them medical treatment at Norwegian hospitals. Topic: United States. 
The United States transferred prisoners for forced labor to both the UK and France, which received 740,000 from the US. For prisoners in the U.S. repatriation was also delayed for harvest reasons. Civilians aged 14 to 65 in the U.S. occupation zone of Germany were also registered for compulsory labor, under threat of prison and withdrawal of ration cards. Topic Conclusion. Most captives of the Americans and the British were released by the end of 1948, and most of those in French captivity were released by the end of 1949. According to the Office of Public Administration, part of Federal Ministry of the Interior, compensation for Germans used as forced labor after the war cannot be claimed in Germany since September 29, 1978, due to the statute of limitations. Topic: See also American food policy in occupied Germany Industrial plans for Germany Foundation. Remembrance, Responsibility and Future Reparations Agreement between Israel and West Germany Forced labor in Germany during World War II